In this fifth item on the museum, we've got a rod that is solid, but it has different um, radii. It's fixed at its two far ends, and it has applied couple or torque that is a 14 tip inches at point C. A free by diagram to the left and to the right of point C gives us what we see over here to the right. And so applying equilibrium, then we'll take to the right positive. <coughs> We'd have 14 plus TB minus TA is going to be equal to zero. I'm not going to do anything more with that at the moment. Instead, we're going to, oh, wait. One equation, two unknowns. This is statically indeterminate. We've got to know that when we're analyzing these problems. Because that means that's going to alter what we do for our second step, just to take a look at the displacement view of this particular system and in essence compatibility that whatever the twist is in segment AC it's going to have to be the opposite of the twist that happens in the right hand segment and since we're going to assume elastic behavior that means phi equals TL over JG For elastic action, then that's going to allow us to do some things here. Now, no, what we were asked to do is find the maximum shear stress for the torque, and and so you know at some point we're going to be doing tau equals t rho over j to take that internal torque and turn it into a shear stress. But now we don't know through equilibrium alone what the internal torques are. We have to go through this displacement view of the situation. So. We'll apply here our TL over JG for the left-hand segment. That would be TA times its L, which is 6 inches, over the J, which would be a pi over 2. And the radius here at the left, let's just call it R to the fourth, and then times G for that left-hand segment. You'll see why I did it like this in just a moment. Then minus, minus sign is important, times TB, we got a 15 inch length on the right hand segment, and pi over 2, but we have twice the radius, 1.5 versus 0.75 of the diameters, but twice the radius to the fourth power times GB. Now we don't have much choice here, but to go ahead and assume that we have constant material, we weren't told, kind of looks like we do, but who knows. And so we have to assume something, and this is a reasonable assumption. Those go away, other things go away, and even the R's go away. R. Actually, that's good, not, not bad. So TA is going to be equal to, when you work out the math here, there's a 15 there, 6 comes down, 2 to the 4th is a 16. That will turn out to be 5 over 32 times TB for that particular ratio. Right now we can sub into our equilibrium equation because now we have one more equation than we had before. We got it through the displacement situation and so that's what's enabling us now to put this back up into here. 14 plus TB minus a minus 5 over 32 TB equal to 0 and we will find out then that TB will be equal to 32 over 37 times the 14 and there's a negative sign there. Right now the 37 comes because a minus and a minus is a plus so we'll have 1 plus 5 over 32 take the 32 up and we get a 37 over 32 take the reciprocal once we take everything to the other side the minus sign because we have plus here and it goes over oh it should be opposite it should both the the two segments here should be helping to resist the applied force so this all makes uh, internal sense 
and that number will be a minus 12.108 or 12.11 kip inches because that's what we have on the <coughs> on T sub B or on the 14 that is and then that will tell us that TA which was equal to minus 5 over 32 of our minus 12.108 and that will be a plus 1.89 inches. So now we have the two torques. We can now apply our shear stress model for twisting of a circular shaft to find ta max, which of course will be where that is maximized, which is at rho equal to c, or really rho equal to r. And you might naturally think that that's going to be in the segment that has the largest internal torque, so let's calculate that first. So you minus 12.11 kip inches times a radius, that's 0.75 inches, over our j, which is pi over 2 in the radius to the fourth power. So kip inch squared over inches to the fourth will give us kips per square inch and that will be minus 18.27 kips per square inch. In AC, then ta max will equal 1.89 kip inches times a radial distance of 0.375 inches, and then over pi over 2, and 0.375 inches raised to the fourth. Ooh, that number is less than one and a lot less than one, and it gets raised to the fourth power, and it does have a large impact here that our max stress there, that segment is 22.8 KSI. Now, we don't care about the plus and the minus here. We just care about the largest absolute value. And so our answer actually turns out to be in the segment to the left. It has a smaller torque, but has a larger shear stress that goes along with that torque.